doing a brief video today for my style series called Movies That Shaped My Style. This channel is very, very much involved with cinema. It is very, very much influenced by cinema. And for those of you who are fans of classic cinema, I know that you will probably check in and watch these videos regularly. Some of you won't be interested in this, but I feel like that this is a huge part of what has kind of put me in the direction that I've come as far as vintage styling goes. So this video is about the movie Gigi. I don't know if any of you are really familiar with Gigi. I know that some of you probably have been watching it since you were a little bitty bitty girl like me. This was one of the first movies that truly truly resonated with me in an aesthetic sense. I remember enjoying the look of it and the feel of it more than any else about it. Um, it wasn't a movie really that I watched for the story even though it's very romantic but it's just a beautiful beautiful movie to look at. Probably aesthetically one of my all-time favorites if not my all-time favorite movie. Um, I have a movie called my I have a video called my top 10 movies and that goes through all of my top 10 movies and I can't remember if Gigi is actually in my top 10 I think it probably is but aesthetically in the look of it it is one of like top one or two. Um, Gigi is directed by Vincent Minnelli. So you guys know he's famous for directing musicals and it is a musical. It is actually written on, is based on a screenplay by Colette or a novella by Colette and it was adapted for the screen by Alan J. Lerner. Um, the cast is predominantly um, just four or five people but it takes place in the turn of the century in turn of the century Paris in an almost like time that never was. The colors are slightly too bright. The the direction creates a Toulouse-Lautrec atmosphere that is unequaled. Even Moulin Rouge could not capture this particular look. It is like a painting. Every single scene is frameable. It is gorgeous. The plot basically involves a young French girl who is being groomed by her grandmother. She lives with her grandmother and her mother, but you never see her mother. She is only doing her opera scales in the background. You only hear her. So the poor woman probably, or the poor child probably never has her mother in her life, but she very much has a support system in her grandmother. And her grandmother is being very much um, influenced by her sister, who is a famous, famous courtesan. Um, to groom Gigi to basically become a mistress of a rich gentleman. She, she's not really being groomed to be a wife. She's being groomed to be a mistress. And in that regard, she is going to her Aunt Alicia's house every single Tuesday or whatever for lessons in etiquette and let it, lessons in protocol, so to speak. So she actually receives this education for the sheer purpose of becoming a specific type of woman. She's rebellious inside. She doesn't want to be this type of woman. And secretly, her grandmother um, does not want her to be either. She wants her to be happy and to be to be a wife and if she wants to be and just to be what she wants to be but unfortunately society has them skewed in their mindset as to what she's allowed to be. Um, they have a family friend named Gaston who is a very very rich young gentleman and he is very weary of English society of French society as well. So he comes to their apartment regularly to just kind of while away the hours and get himself away from that world. And that's what he loves most about Gigi and her grandmother is the fact that they are separate from that world. So the fact that Leslie Caron, Gigi, is being groomed to be a part of that world is very off-putting to him as well. That's kind of why the story arc is so great. Knowing where the story is leading makes it so much more rewarding. And Gaston is being encouraged by his older friend uh, played by Maurice Chevalier, to just let everything go and just to be free and happy and not to worry so much about whether or not this is this is acceptable or this is acceptable. But Gaston is so pressured because of the, his wealth that he feels he feels like there's no way he can relax, that he can't be happy, that he can't be excited anymore. He feels bored by everything. And that's the theme of one of the songs in the movie. Um, other than Thank Heaven for Little Girls and I Remember It Well, I don't... Oh, and of course the theme song Gigi. So maybe there's three or four, three songs probably that really truly have a foothold in musicals. But 
this isn't really to me as much about a musical or about being a musical as it is just being a visual experience. It's a feast for the eyes. Um, all of the beautiful pastels mixed with the gorgeous blacks and whites and stark grays and things like that just really, really blend together to make it such a visual experience that it sometimes doesn't resonate until third or fourth viewings. I've always loved the movie when I was a little girl. I used to draw these fashions and make paper dolls out of them. I wanted to get married in the white and satin evening gown that she wears at the end. And then as I got older, I wanted to get married in the white high-necked dress, lace dress that she's wearing with four yards of material in the skirt. It's wonderful. To me, it is the most gorgeous costume design ever. Cecil Beaton did the costumes. And of course, everyone knows that he is a phenomenal and elegant and elaborate costume designer, but he was also a clothing designer and he did a lot of evening gowns and things for ladies in that time period. The best featured performances, even though Gigi is incredible, she isn't, Leslie Crone is not called upon to dance in this film. So because she is not called upon to dance, you don't necessarily feel the emotion and the impact that she gives you in An American in Paris, which was her debut, and she danced throughout the film. So it's not something that makes you feel automatically um, connected to her in that sense. I feel like without dancing, Leslie Caron is only, she was great in her Oscar nominated or winning performance. I think it's Lily that she was nominated for. She was great in that. But at this stage in her career, she wasn't quite to that level yet. So she's wonderful. But to me, she's definitely not the draw. Um, she looks absolutely gorgeous in everything. Her big wide set eyes and her wide mouth, wonderful. So the best performances in this film are by far the one from the ones from Marie Chevalier, who plays Gaston's older friend who is trying to get him to relax and calm down and not worry so much. And um, Hermione Gingold, she plays Gigi's grandmother. She's wonderful. You love her so much because she wants so much more for Gigi than what she's grooming her to do. And she feels so pressured by her sister, Aunt Alicia, to do so. Now, Aunt Alicia, played by Isabel Jean, or Jean, is absolutely the best part of this movie for me. I know that I am not necessarily in the popular majority with that, but her scenes are the most quotable, the most memorable. When she is explaining to Gigi about why small kings give bigger jewels than big kings and all this kind of stuff, I mean, she when she's explaining to her how she can eat, the woman puts a giant bite in her mouth and proceeds to speak as though nothing is going on. It's just fine. It's just fine. You can tell, if I can do it, you can do it. It's just like, to me, some of the best moments of movies ever. I love her so much, and I think that one of the best things about this movie is the fact that you feel so attached to her, but you know that she is the bad guy in this movie. She's the one who's pushing Gigi to basically be a whore. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's it's wonderful. It's just wonderful performance. So let's talk a little bit about this fashion. The f look closely when you're watching it at how the daytime and evening wear, how they blend with the scenery, how they blend with everything around them, and also how they so beautifully say daytime and evening. It's a beautiful, fanciful, almost like a fantasy version of what the French fashion would have been for this time period. And Louis Jordan and Marie Chevalier, their suits for day, which are usually blends of taupes and grays and things like that, blend so beautifully with all of the French countryside with the French atmosphere all around. And then whenever Gigi is wearing her beautiful lady grown-up dress that she has with the high-necked white, you'll see the way it blends with the lighting in her window when she's standing in the window, the way that, it, the, way that the, the delicate look of the lace, um, just the details, the way that it shows up in the sunlight glowing in on her in the window, it's beautiful. And then the scenes in Maxime's with all of the gorgeous, elegant, lush colors and the really, really Toulouse-Lautrec-inspired clothing and feel. All of that blends so beautifully with the surroundings as well. Um, the dresses that stand out to me the most, I absolutely love her plaid two-piece schoolgirl outfit that she wears at the beginning. It is a great, great way to say her, to bring in her youth, but also bring in the high fashion quality of this film. I love every single piece 
that Ava Gabor wears throughout this entire film. And she's great in it too. Watch her closely during the She's Not Thinking of Me scene where Gaston is kind of singing to the side and he's like talking about how she's definitely cheating on him, she is not thinking of him. Just watch her throughout the duration of that. The camera is facing him while he's singing and she's beside him and it never lets up. She is, it is one take. She is constantly going, constantly gushing, constantly smiling, constantly kissing, constantly this. She's great. She doesn't break character once and it's amazing. Her dress with the feathers emblazoned across the front and all the brilliant, brilliant colors that basically say, look at me, I'm cheap, fabulous. Her ice skating outfit, fabulous. Definitely check out every single one of these costumes. They are gorgeous. The dress that I loved the most when I was a child was the purple dress that she wears at the end. And she's wearing this elaborate, elaborate purple lilac feathered ensemble. Um, that is, was always my favorite when I was a child. As I've gotten older, I've started to become a little bit more attached to some of the other fashions that she wears. The beautiful lace dress with the high neck, with the, all the little details. Uh, the, the gorgeous dress she wears to Maxime's with the birds. When I was young, I don't remember think, knowing that they were actually birds emblazoned across her chest and shoulders and flashing out to the sides or like thrusting out to the sides. Um, that falls so beautifully. That dress, the cut of that dress falls so beautifully on Leslie Caron's dancer body. It's perfect. So this is a movie that shaped my style, not because I went on to, you know, try to channel French fashion from the turn of the century, but because it put me in a mood of, it put me into a, it gave me a passion for the aesthetic sense of fashion. Whether or not it be for, from any era, I became passionate about things that had details that were beautifully thought out and were really really that when someone really cared about those details um but yeah that's all on that one um hopefully you enjoyed whatever photos i've interspersed here um but also hopefully you'll give this movie a chance it's definitely a 10 out of 10 for me one of my favorite movies ever um and just you know enjoy the beautiful little fashion show that aunt alicia shows leslie caron um to kind of give her i mean it reminds me so much of the scene in The Great Muppet Caper when, <laughs> when Miss Piggy is trying to pick out a dress to wear or she's like looking at, like they're showcasing fashions for her. I feel like it was very, very much an homage to Gigi um, because I know I saw The Great Muppet Caper first, but I love the scene where the models are coming in and showing Aunt Alicia different dresses and Gigi likes all of them except the dress that Aunt Alicia picks out and then when the dress is put on her it's hilarious great scene so yeah I've rambled a lot I'm gonna edit this so that it sounds a little bit more cohesive but enjoy and hopefully you guys will give this movie a shot and this series a shot and we will talk to you soon